In the previous WebEx Quick Tip video, we covered how to set up WebEx for use with your browser and Canvas. In this video, we'll learn about the features included in the WebEx Training Center and how to use the WebEx interface to host and record live sessions. After installing the WebEx extension for your browser, the Training Center will open up, followed by a pop-up allowing you to change and test your audio settings. When you're ready, press the OK button in the audio test window, and after adjusting your sound levels in the audio mixer, go ahead and close it. The second window that should have opened up is the main WebEx conference window. From here, we can see a few different tools that we can use to interact with participants in the conversation. On the top right, you'll see some buttons that customize the layout of the window. Participants opens up a panel with a list of the people viewing your conference. Here you can enable or disable the audio or video coming from your computer by clicking the camera or audio buttons within this section. You can also see any other participants within this conversation. You can invite new guests or remind invited users of your session by clicking the plus person button. This will bring up a dialog that allows you to send messages with invites to specific people. You can also copy the session URL by clicking the gray copy button and then send that link to students or guests manually. The students enrolled in your course will automatically be able to see your event. For external guests to participate in this session, you'll need to go back to the Meets for WebEx section in your course on Canvas and click on the gear icon next to your current event, followed by the Invite Guests button. When prompted, click on the purple Generate Link button and you will be given a URL to send to guests external to your course. Let's go back to our WebEx window and continue inspecting the Participants panel. For each participant, you can view options for assigning different roles to them, such as Presenter, Panelist, or Host. Notice the extra buttons in this panel. First, we have a little hand icon. When clicked, a raised hand icon will appear next to your name. This also goes for participants. They can use this to non-verbally signal the host or panelist without disrupting the conference. The check mark and red X buttons can be used by you or participants to provide answers to questions posed in the conversation. You can check on the number of yes and no answers by clicking on the bullhorn icon to the right. Lastly, check whether your guests are actively viewing your session by clicking the exclamation point icon to the right. Next, let's check out the chat panel. Click on the chat icon at the top right of the window and make sure it glows blue. The chat panel should appear beneath the one for participants. Here, you can use the text box to send messages to users within this conversation. Clicking on the Send To drop-down menu will allow you to select exactly who you want to send messages to. Now, let's learn how to record our session. Click on the Session sub-menu in the Windows menu bar. Under Recording Settings, you'll be able to choose whether you'd like to record to a server that is accessible through Canvas or to your computer. In this video, we'll learn how to record to the server so that our students can access the recordings through Canvas. Let's make sure Record on Server is selected. You should have seen a recorder panel open up at the bottom right of the WebEx window. Click on the gray button with the gray circle to begin recording this session. When you're finished recording, click on the button with the gray square in the recorder panel to stop the recording. Once your WebEx session is finished, your recordings will automatically begin to get processed on the server and become available to you and your students as soon as they're ready. They may take a few extra moments depending on how long your recording session lasted. We'll cover the steps to access your recordings a little later. Next, let's learn how to conduct a poll. 
Click on the downward facing arrow at the top right of the screen, and then click Polling. The polling panel should now appear. You can create multiple choice or short answer questions with one or multiple answers by using the buttons and the drop down menu and then clicking on new. Let's create a multiple choice question with multiple answers. Select the options and then click the new button. Now we should see an area with a space to type a question. Type a question and press enter. You'll notice that your question has been created and a new space for typing has appeared. This is the first possible answer for this question's poll. Type an answer and press enter. A new space should have appeared allowing you to type a second answer. Type as many answers as necessary. You can choose which answers are correct by clicking on an answer and then pressing the mark as correct button. You can also move the answer up or down the list by selecting it and clicking the up or down arrows in the polling panel. When you're done creating questions and answers, click on the options button to edit some simple options for the poll, including timer and results options. Your poll is now ready for answering. Click Open Poll to have your participants complete the poll. You'll get live stats during the time frame of the poll. If you notice that everyone is done, you can close the poll by clicking the Close Poll button. You'll see final polling stats after this, as well as options for sharing the results. If you want to save your poll's questions and results, click on the Diskette icon in the panel and choose the destination for your files. The last of our panels, the Q&A panel, requires an active participant to work. It is a way for participants to ask questions for hosts or panelists to answer. Click on the Q&A button to open its panel. This may blink orange in color if you've received a new question. When you're ready to answer a question, simply click on it and type your answer limited to 256 characters in the text box. You can choose to send it privately or for everyone to see. The final part of this interface that we will cover is the Share submenu in the Windows menu bar. Different event types will have different share features. In this video, we'll cover three of these, File, Whiteboard, and Application. Sharing files gives you the capability of showing a document to your participants. The document can be a text file, PDF document, PowerPoint presentation, video file, or audio file. WebEx accepts many file types. However, make sure to test your files before committing to using them in your meeting. Also, be aware that different file types bring up different interfaces for their use in the meeting. Generally, a text document or PowerPoint presentation will have controls for flipping pages and making annotations. Take a moment to open up different files, including images and videos, to see how the interface changes for those documents. Another type of sharing that we can do is to share a whiteboard. Click on the Share submenu and then click on Whiteboard. This option allows us to annotate a virtual whiteboard with different pointers, text, or markers. When you're done sharing files or whiteboards, you can close them with an option to save these items to your computer. Finally, let's learn how to share a specific application window. Click on the Share submenu and then hover the mouse over Application. Here you'll see a list of your open applications such as Google Chrome, Windows Media Player, or Adobe Reader. Clicking any of these applications will start a screen sharing session, where anything that is visible in that application will be visible to your participants. Be wary of sharing anything that may contain personal content. Let's open up a document on our computer, then navigate back to the WebEx Share submenu and share the document's application. 
you'll notice that the WebEx interface has disappeared and now you have a green shared button as well as a red stop button at the top of your document window. This means that this window is visible to your participants. To add another application to the screen sharing session, navigate to a different window and click on the blue share button at the top. To remove one, click the red stop button. If you hover your mouse over the top middle of your screen, a control panel will appear allowing you to enable or disable options for the screen share session, such as creating annotations, assigning roles to participants, or pausing and stopping the screen share session. Let's press stop sharing in the control panel to return to the WebEx window. Let's now end our WebEx session by closing the WebEx window. If you're the host, you'll be closing the session for all participants. However, if you assign the role of host to a TA or other instructor, then the session will remain open. Just note that students and external guests cannot host your sessions. They would have to be defined as an instructor in your course on Canvas. Our final task is to access the recordings that we made for this session. If you saved it onto your computer, locate the file and double-click it. By installing the WebEx application earlier, you should already be able to view this file. If you save the recording to the server, let's navigate back to our Meets for WebEx section in our Canvas course. Click on the gray Event Recordings button at the top of the page. If you made and saved recordings of an event, they'll be found here after you end your session. Click on the View Recordings button next to the event that we just closed. As mentioned earlier, your recordings will be visible here once they are finished processing. Don't fret if you don't see them yet, as it may take a while for the server to finish processing them. You'll see two links for each recording that you made within that session. The first link will be a file that you can download to your computer. Clicking this will open a page that starts the download and provides a link to download an application that will allow you to view your recording. Clicking the link that is followed by Streaming will open a page with an online player that allows you to view the recording without having to download another application. In a little while, the network recording player will open up in a new window. You can use the interface in this player to play and scrub through the session as well as view different panels, like the chat panel for example. The recording will log all of the video and audio conferencing of the session as well as public chats, questions, and polls. Congratulations! You've made it to the conclusion of this Quick Tip episode. For more instructional videos and information on the many features of Canvas, MediaSite, and other instructional technologies used within Canvas, visit wordpress.fau.edu slash canvas.